work on building my pelvic floor. Is that the same as Kegels? We need to start back at lower lobby in that case. What type of shape am I in? Out of it? Is that an option? Like how much equipment do I need to buy? Coming! I have a very small window. That counts as interval training, right? I do many exercises just in like the day to day. <laughs> How much time does this really take? I think the most important thing to do initially is to set realistic expectations. There's a lot of social media pressure. Setting realistic expectations that are specific to you is the most important thing and set realistic timelines. I think another do is to hire a professional. And of course I say that because that's what I do, but there's just so much misinformation out there. Don't compete with other people. Everybody's body is different. Everybody's delivery was different. Everybody's pregnancy was different. Don't put on a waist trainer. They slow down progress even though they make you look skinny right away, allow your body to breathe naturally, and it's ultimately gonna help your pelvic floor recover faster. What is a pelvic floor exactly? When we think about our core, we think about this six pack muscle in front, our like sexy abs that we're trying to get back to, right? But the core is actually more shaped like a canister with a top and a bottom. So the top is your diaphragm that helps you breathe like this, and the bottom is your pelvic floor that helps you breathe like this. So in pregnancy, the pelvic floor is pushed down and weaken. Regaining strength in the pelvic floor, regaining structure in the pelvic floor is one of the first steps that you take. I think the traditional exercise for pelvic floor is a Kegel where people just squeeze everything super, super tight in their pelvic floor. But one of the best things that you can do for your pelvic floor is actually breathing, getting through full, deep respirations all the way in and all the way out. If you ever want to test this theory, just blow up a balloon as hard as you can. And when you do that action of blowing out, you'll feel your abs pull in, that core canister get tight, your pelvic floor lifts, and all of those muscles start working really, really hard. If you had a smooth delivery, typically two to four weeks after delivery, you can start doing pelvic floor exercises. The other thing you can do right away, doing some stretching. Initially, you've got to hold baby to breastfeed. You're maybe pushing stroller. And our posture tends to start getting very relaxed. And so all of these muscles across the front of our chest and our neck become very, very tight. And so without dealing with anything in the pelvic floor or the abs, you can start doing some stretches by pulling your arms back behind you like this standing in a doorway and stretching your chest, even just clasping your arms behind your back. So regaining neutral alignment in that posture is one of the most important things to start working on. Especially when we're in a society where just naturally, I feel like we hunch over. Of course, we're all sitting, you know, holding baby doing this too with our phones, yep. right? Exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> scrolling Instagram while I'm picking up fitness tips while pumping, of course. Exactly. Multitasking. Um, what should I watch out for if I've gotten the doctor approval and I'm going to start working out? When you're pregnant, your belly's pushing out against your abdominal wall. If you start pushing on those ab muscles before they've naturally come back together, you can further weaken that tissue in the middle and create a real problem. Additionally, when you're pregnant, your body produces a hormone called relaxin, which is, makes your joints loose, which allows baby to come out, which is great, but they remain loose right afterwards. And it takes a, a little bit of time for the hormones to restore and the joint tension to come back and that tension is a good thing. If you start exercising too soon, it can cause issues with the low back, the SI joint, your pelvis, your sacrum, that can cause like long-term lifetime back pain. Look for those three things. Are your stomach muscles split apart? Like if you do a crunch, do they cone up in the middle? That's the sign of diastasis. Are you having bladder leakage and are you having back pain? The most important thing that you can spend your time on when it comes to weight loss is your nutrition and your meal prep. So if all you have is 15 minutes, put yourself together some meals, some healthy snacks like yogurts and fruits, vegetables, things that are easy to grab that are gonna save you time later. If you've got another 15 minutes, maybe start with some of your breathing exercises. If you've got another 15 minutes, maybe you can add some of your strength training exercises or cardiovascular training like walking. You can get results with Whatever time you have, you just have to be specific about the things that you're going to do with that time. Can you show us some progressions of exercises that new moms could do? I'm going to show some of the um, breathing exercises. First one, you want to get your body into a neutral alignment. So your head, your shoulders, and your hips will stay stacked. You want to be straight up and down. You can also sit with your feet out in front of you. 
crisscross, as long as you're in a neutral spine. Finding your pelvic floor is with a breath out is basically like pulling up the muscles that you would use to stop the flow of urine. Put your hands on your rib cage like this and take a deep breath in and breathe all the way out. So that breath out is gonna last about three times longer than your breath in. What you wanna watch for here is what we call reverse breathing, where you get tension up here in your neck, where we suck in. So instead of breathing through the ribs, we're breathing up here through your neck. In a first time breathing, you'll feel your abs with just breath. You wanna do about three sets of five. Once you've gotten the feel of that, the breath out with the pelvic floor, you wanna do what we call a double exhale. So it looks like this. And you'll feel those rib cage pull down even tighter. Once you've managed those breathing exercises in this position, you'll move them to a laying down position with your feet up on a chair like this. So same breath in a laying down position, and then the same breaths in a quadruped position. For the first two or three workouts, we're gonna spend about 20 minutes just breathing. Then we're gonna do activities of, of daily life. You can hold a weight out in front of you and sit and stand and engage your core. So breath in, breath out, and pelvic floor pulls up. The hurdle step, work on putting your foot up onto the chair, and back down with the breath out. <sighs> Believe it or not, this is gonna feel like a big crunch when you uh, just had a baby. You can switch and do alternating legs, which forces you to shift weight from side to side. And then this is what I call the bathtub reach. You're gonna get up on one foot. So imagine basically you're giving baby a bath and you're gonna sit those hips back and then pull them back up. Breathe in, <sighs> breathe out. <sighs> And this progresses as we get stronger to doing essentially a standing deadlift. Um, so making sure that you've got um, control and neutral alignment in all those positions is the most important thing. Any exercises that you should completely avoid? If I were to make a blanket statement of what to avoid, you wanna avoid planking right away. Your guts basically push down on that weakened abdominal tissue and can make it way worse. You wanna avoid any kind of lateral bending like this. Same thing, can pull that tissue apart. You wanna avoid crunching, breath holding. Big one that I see new moms get into too quickly is running. I always recommend that people go out for walks. I think walks are great, but running, when we talk about that core canister, every time you run, the pelvic floor goes like this. So if you're having issues with bladder leakage, when you sneeze or cough, and then we put our pelvic floor through that kind of torture, it's weakened. And so it can't respond the way that it's supposed to. So walk, 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 but don't run. How do I know that I'm ready to increase the intensity? My best advice on this is listen to your own body. If they just feel really, really hard, continue to do that same workout until it starts to feel easy. You can progress by adding weight, adding more reps, adding more time under tension, or you can progress by adding less rest time. But listen to your body and maybe start with one of the lighter ones, like give yourself one or two more reps from what you did the time before, or walk for five more minutes. So when things start to feel easy, just add a little bit more from what you did the time before. And what about like setting a realistic goal? Everyone has unrealistic goals that are set by social media, but I, I think focusing on the habits that will get you to your goal is much more important than focusing on the outcome of a goal. We kind of have to get the idea of having our pre-baby body back out of our head. This is going to be a new normal. Your body is going to look different, but you want to create habits that are going to allow you to maintain your health and fitness easily. So setting a realistic goal a lot of times means setting a habit goal versus setting an outcome goal. Best advice for a new mom. As far as exercise goes, give yourself a break. Create space for it. Create time for it as much as you can. If all you have is 15 minutes a day to go outside and sit in the sun and just do your breathing exercises, that's great. It will build up as you go. My name is Karen White. I've been a trainer for 16 years. Currently, I'm an educator and trainer for Equinox, but I also do online virtual training as well as in-home training. I have a bachelor's in exercise science um, from University of Kansas, and I'm also certified as a pronatal specialist for pre- and postnatal um, training.